Fuel prices have always been a major pain point for most car owners. In recent years, the distance that can be covered with the same amount of money has been getting shorter and shorter. Although the new energy vehicles that can be charged are good, charging is a big hassle, and replacing the battery after a few years is not cheap. So, is there a car that can run for a long time on a single tank of fuel? The answer is no, but in 1957, Ford conducted a conceptual exploration that theoretically could fulfill everyone's wishes. This concept was the Ford Nucleon, a nuclear-powered car. In the 1950s and 1960s, major countries were very keen on nuclear energy, not only vigorously developing it in the field of weapons, but also extending it to civilian use. The successful use of nuclear power plants in particular inspired the idea of building small nuclear reactors. At that time, the United States vigorously developed small nuclear power devices, proposing designs for nuclear-powered tanks and nuclear-powered aircraft. The miniaturization of nuclear power seemed to have technological prospects, although it was in the military field. However, many military technologies eventually serve civilian applications. Ford wanted to conduct a conceptual exploration first, without waiting for the concept to fully mature. The company built a model car, with the front half of the vehicle occupied by the front part of the body, the driver's cabin, and the passenger cabin. The vehicle's driving components, steering components, and so on were no different from those of conventional vehicles. The most special feature was its use of nuclear power, with the power unit occupying the rear half of the body, where a small nuclear reactor would be installed inside. The vehicle would use a uranium fission nuclear reactor, with the heat generated by the nuclear reaction used to boil water. The high temperature steam produced by heating the water could then be used to drive a turbine to generate mechanical power, thus serving as the driving force for the vehicle. The condensed water from the steam could continue to be used for heating, and it would also help cool the reactor. Ford envisioned a future in which traditional gas stations would be replaced. However, it did not provide secure nuclear reaction materials. Instead, the entire reactor would be replaced, and high-efficiency and low-efficiency types of nuclear reactors would be provided, presumably to meet the needs of different vehicle types, such as regular passenger cars and trucks. It was estimated that after replacing the reactor once, the vehicle could travel 5,000 miles, or 8,046 kilometers, which would be enough for a year's worth of commuting. According to Ford's public materials, the length of the nuclear-powered car would be 200.3 inches, or about 5 meters, with a width of 77.4 inches, or about 1.97 meters, and a height of only 41.4 inches, or about 1.05 meters. It was essentially a nuclear-powered supercar. Only a 3 8 scale model of the Ford Nucleon was built, and this model is currently preserved in the Henry Ford Museum in Michigan. At that time, people were already aware of the technological barriers to miniaturizing nuclear reactors and the potential hazards, so they basically gave up on related research. We currently only see nuclear reactors being used in vessels and facilities such as power plants, far from the miniaturization envisioned at the time. 